a hearty welcome to you. Love to have you on behalf of Apostle Courtney McLean and Reverend Nadine McLean. Here are the announcements for this week. My Royal Crown, ooh, by Talia Hyman Fife. That's it. That's right. Another author, another book launch, April 1 at the Multipurpose Building at Wafif. Admission, free, free, free. Oh my gosh. Please make sure you come out and support. And speaking of books, you are encouraged to visit the Wafif's bookstore for books written by our many authors. You just heard it. Yes, we have several authors here, including our Apostle Courtney McLean and many others. There are also available paraphernalia such as key rings, cups, and license plate holders. We invite you to stop by and browse our selection today. We so look forward to serving you. Attention all heads of department, ministers and cell group leaders, WAFIF is on a mission for global impact as we are aiming to ensure that all aspects of the ministry are aligned with a global standard. So here's what we're going to do. We will be launching our online departmental directory and we need your help to make this initiative possible. Please submit the following information via email to wafifmembercare at gmail.com by Friday, March 17th, 2023. One, individual headshot photographs of the leadership team of the department or the cell group. Two, a brief overview of the role of the department, not exceeding 50 words, please, and thanks. Three, list of services provided by the department. Four, hours of operation, well, you know, if, if that's applicable. And five, complete the information in the attached Google Sheet. If you get lost, if you get confused, don't worry. Dial Deacon Eskimo's number, 876-862-7943 or Sister Kimberly Brown at 876-524-4627. WAFIF's WOW Welcome Campaign. We are inviting you to partner with us to create a WOW Welcome Experience for all visitors and members. Create an innovative catchphrase that will be used by all customer-facing teams to create a lasting impression on our visitors and members during the welcome experience. Guidelines, keep it short and simple. No more than 10 words. Make it memorable. Make it easy to remember for those saying it and for those hearing it. Be creative while keeping our brand and our core values in mind. Email all submissions to waffafimbacare at gmail.com by Friday, March 17, 2023. And remember, you can always contact Deacon Eskimo and Tobias at 862-7943 or Kimberly Brown at 524-4627 if you get confused. Sign up on the Member Care portal today. It's easy at 123. Visit our website at www.wafif.org. Click info, click login, click sign up, complete the form and create your own username and your password. By the way, the email address used to register must be the same that was submitted to the office for your personal record. Just let you know. Then you verify your email, then you log back in and enjoy the benefits. What are the benefits? I'm so glad you asked. Update your personal information at your convenience, like if your last name changed. Keep updated with announcements, events, birthdays, anniversaries happening within the ministry. Send messages to other members. And coming soon, access the business directory to support businesses owned by WAFIF members and partners. Access our internal departmental directory online. Be in the know and access information while on the go. Sign up on our member portal today. And congratulations for all those who were baptized. Ajene White, Kimberly Jerwin, Lasagna Wilmoth, Shirley Thompson, Denae Brown, Clarion O'Brien, Shaniza Pinnock, Oral Pinnock, Joshua Authors, Christopher Dobson, Kimona Rodney, Marsha Cameron, Shanta Hamilton. Whew, that's a lot. Welcome to the family. Here are the birthdays for this week. Gabrielle Marshall, yeah, yeah. 
Kathleen Brown, Mona Lisa Harvey, Karen Whittle, Chanel Fox, Nicole Francis, Ian Grant, Amoy Morrison, Farah Daly, Angela Williams, Christopher Butler, Michelle Murray, and Jory Ricketts. Happy birthday! Happy anniversary to Deacon Kelvin and Sister Ishana Rambaram. Happy anniversary to Susan Collins Grant and Ian Grant. Happy anniversary to Shana Gay and Duane Beckford and happy anniversary to Annette and Andrew Darby. And that's it for the announcements. On behalf of Apostle Courtney McLean and Reverend Nadine McLean, I am Alicia Taylor. Do have yourself a wonderful week. Morning, everyone. How are you guys doing this morning? I'm so hungry this morning, man. Oh, come on, stand up. Let me hear your voices. How are you feeling this morning? Come again, man. I'm not ready yet, man. How are you feeling this morning? All right, now warm up. You guys ready to worship the presence of the Lord this morning? You guys ready to worship this morning? All right. So we're going to sing some songs. I will need them. We need a lot of energy this morning to bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, continue to bless his name this morning. Let's worship for God this morning.
great God. Our God is an awesome God. And there is none like him. He is an Ephesians 3.20 God. The God who is able to do the exceedingly and the abundantly. Above all that we could ever ask or think. My God. My God. I'm going to share this testimony with you. And it's going to encourage somebody this morning. That God is always looking out for you. God have our back. My God. He has our back. Even when it feel like nothing is happening. God have your back. He has my back. My God. My God. You may have heard this testimony before, but I'm going to share it again to see how good God is. About two years ago, I was driving in Spanish Town on one of those narrow roads. And it was two-way, and it was very narrow. And driving, driving, and a gentleman was coming up the road. And he decided that he was not going to stop because, you know, sometimes our men are bullies on the road. And he decided that he was not going to stop and I was coming up. So I barely touched him. Barely touched him. You know, it didn't dent or anything. It just touched him. He came out of his vehicle and he called his little men. He did his head move and he called his little men. And they all came because he seemed to be a big don. And they came and they told me that they want this amount to buff and they want this amount to do this and they, they made their claims. No, I didn't have all that money on me that they wanted. So when they came up, one of the young men said, they know Miss Williams this. No, my name is not Williams. No, Miss Williams this. And the other one said, yes, a true, a Miss Williams. You remember me? Now apparently Miss Williams seemed to be a lovely teacher she was a teacher good teacher and God just let me look like Miss Williams <laughs> and the other one said yes I'm Miss Williams Miss Williams I am so and so um, son I said really but I answered not a word like Jesus I answered not a word because I know I wasn't Miss Williams and I was not about to tell them that I'm not Miss Williams so I smiled and a lady from across there was a lady from across the bar and she came over and she said, but I know this lady, her son and my son is playmate. Never see this lady yet. <laughs> she said, leave the lady alone. All of us are drivers. So I went into my purse to give them all that I had. And the gentleman realized that this is Miss Williams and she's a good woman. He said, no lady, go on, go on. Isn't God good? He will change your looks just to protect you. He will change your looks just to preserve you. My God, my God. So if you hear anybody calling me Miss Williams, that's why they call me Miss Williams. <laughs> but God is a good God. He is a great God. I just worship him because he know that, I mean, I went to do something in particular that day. And if I had given them all my money, I don't know what would have happened. But God allowed them to see somebody else. My God, my God, he's my, as, as Minister Andrew said, he's my shield and I'd add he's my buckler. My God, the glory and the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Tell so us stand this morning and, and, and just pray. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we worship you this morning. We give you praise this morning, Jesus. We magnify and we glorify your name. Father God, you are indeed worthy. You are an awesome wonder. There is none beside you, before you, beneath you, and there will never be any after you. You are the one true and living God. And so I pray this morning, Father God, that you'll touch your people. I pray, mighty God, that your people will be healed, delivered, set free this morning. My God, I pray, God, that salvation will spring forth in the house this morning. Souls will be saved, mighty God. People will run to you, Jesus. My God, your word says that the goodness of the Lord lead to repentance. And so mighty God, as a result of your goodness, I pray God that it will lead someone to repentance this morning. My God, I pray Lord that you will sweep over this place. You will move mightily, Jesus. I pray God that today will be a day that is forever etched in the hearts and the minds of your people. My God. 
I pray God that when the word comes forth, it will come forth with clarity. It will come forth with power. It will come forth like a sharp sword and pierce the very hearts of your people. My God, we bind everything over this atmosphere that is not of you, God. Bring the air, the land, and the sea under subjection to your spirit. My God, mighty God, mighty God, we just commit the service into your hands, Lord. We commit each and every person into your hands, Lord. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that you'll breathe upon us, Lord. Breathe upon your people this morning. My God, wrap yourself around us this morning. My God, let your anointing flow in the house this morning, Jesus. Let your power fall in this house this morning. My God, we declare that we have victory this morning. Victory, 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 victory over the enemy this morning. Victory in our personal lives this morning, Jesus. Victory, my God of heaven. Hallelujah. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do. My God, we declare that today is an excellent day. Today is a great day, mighty God. We declare it to be so in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. Amen. It's time to give to Jesus. It is time to give to Jesus. Shout a hallelujah. hallelujah. We worship God with our giving. In the meantime, please prepare your tithes and your offering. The word of God, according to Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me here, which saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now, tithe means tenth. And it is 10% of your earnings. And even if you are not employed, you can still tithe because you would have received something. Your offering is any amount that God has laid upon your heart. And your seed is a free will gift of any amount. Now God wants us to advance his kingdom. And so giving is an opportunity to partner with him. What if is fertile soil and when you give, God will multiply your finances. When you give, you will receive a blessing from God. So many testimonies of giving and it comes back. My God, the Bible said, when you give, it shall come back to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over and men shall even give into your bosom. For persons who would like to give using a debit or credit card, there's a machine at the back. Please make your way. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and an usher will get one to you. If you are online and you would like to give, the giving options are at the bottom of the screen. We also have a new giving option, Zelle, and the account is wafifgiving at gmail.com. The Lord is expanding the church and we invite you to give into the building fund. We ask that you, you give $1,000 monthly into the building fund. And if you can do more, we will receive more. If you're overseas and you would like to give into our building fund, you can give the equivalent of the $1,000 or if you can do more, please do more. God is, you cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. You give God your last, and before the week is out, He said, Prove me. And He's not a man that she should lie. And when you give, God will find a way to give it back to you. Even if you give your last, you'll be surprised within 24, within 36, within 48 hours, it comes back to you. It is always blessed to give than to receive hallelujah could you please stand lift your tithes lift your offering we also have the benevolent fund that blue basket we have the benevolent fund please 
Help us to help those who are in need. Hallelujah. The ushers will serve you this morning. But before that, shall we pray? Father, as we're about to receive the gifts of your people, I pray God that you'll turn it around for somebody this morning. My God, as you give, shackle bonds will be broken. As you give, your children will line up. As you give, your household will line up. I pray that you will overcome your financial struggles. I declare that the drought is over. As you sacrifice and as you give this morning, sickness will be removed from your body. As you give this morning, your child, which was dysfunctional, will begin to come in alignment. As you give this morning, your finances will be multiplied. My God, in blessing, bless your people. In multiplying, multiply your people, God. Your people shall not be left begging, Father God. Lift up a standard against principalities and powers and everything that wants to devour your people's finances, mighty God. Remember your people, Jesus. Remember your people this morning, Jesus. As your people sacrifice, it will remove the butt from their lives. As your people sacrifice, my God, they'll be delivered, set free, healed, and made whole. My God, this altar, Father God. My God, as your people give, the altar will speak for your people. And so mighty God, as your people give this morning, I pray God that they will not only receive 30 fold, not 60 fold, but 100 fold in blessings, mighty God. And so Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do to your people. We thank you for the good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. We thank you, mighty God, that you are a God who is faithful and you esteem your word above your name. And so, Father God, bless the gifts of your people as they give. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name and the church say, Amen. Hallelujah.
that all day. Couldn't you? Great morning to you, people of God. Before I get into it, I want to take the time to honor the Holy Spirit, who is the head of my life. If it wasn't for him, I don't know how I would overcome the trials, the challenges, and the tribulations. So I give honor to the Holy Spirit and to my spiritual father and spiritual mother, Apostle McLean and First Lady McLean, and, their, and the First Family. I want to shout out to the ELT, the ministers, the members, the dark, and all the hardworking people of Wafif. And you who are in the audience, celebrate yourselves, please. Shout out to Reverend Kimola Brownlow and Minister Delo, all the way in Fort Lauderdale. Now, it is my pleasure and just such a wonderful joy to introduce one of the greatest gifts God has given to me. One of the smartest and brightest persons I know. The only person who is able to tolerate me 24 7. <sighs> I could spend days up here talking about none other than Deaconess Yetunda Dixon. Please make her welcome as she discuss visioning. God bless you. So again, I have to give thanks to the Holy Spirit. I mean, just last night I was looking at uh, Great Morning, Great Morning. <laughs> so, you may be seated. So last night I was just looking at how good God is because I remember I ran very far away from church to find a husband. And I thought I found myself a wonderful bad boy with tattoos. And I was like, yeah. I never envisioned myself being in this position. But here we are today. Here we are. So I thank God for his Holy Spirit and for leading us. I thank God for the, the visionary of this house, Apostle Courtney McLean and Reverend Nadine McLean. I thank God for all the, the, the ELT, the ministers, the diaconates, the leaders, for the members who are here and for our partners online, and also for Wafi Fort Lauderdale. So this morning, I'm going to go through visioning, and I'm going to focus mainly on the biblical aspects, because what I realize in the world is that there are lots of principles that are biblical that the world has adopted and seems to be succeeding with it, and then the kingdom people are not necessarily following or adhering to the principles that are in the Bible. So our focus this morning is visioning. So what we'll cover in this presentation is we'll explore the biblical concept for visioning. We'll look at examples both in the Old and the New Testament. And then we'll give you the steps and discuss what are the benefits of visioning. So what is visioning? So the, the next slide for me, media. So visioning is the process of creating a clear mental picture of a desired future state and taking practical steps to make that vision reality. So why is visioning important? It is important because if you want to live purple, purposeful lives that are aligned with God's plan, that's why it's important. A lot of times we're doing things and wondering why it's not working. That's because that's not why you were created or designed. You're outside of the will of God. So one of the steps, the first steps will let you know that, hey, we need to sit down and actually ask God to guide us. So the importance is that it's essential for us to live purposeful lives that are aligned with God's plan. So some biblical basis for visioning. We are going to look now at three verses, uh, Proverbs 29, 18, Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3, and Acts 2, 17 to 18. So for Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. 
So what this verse does is that it emphasizes the importance of having a clear vision for our lives and the negative consequences of not having one. Mm -hmm. And we see that it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So that is the negative consequence. Now, if you look at Habakkuk 2, verses 2 to 3, uh, it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And I read all of that verse because a lot of times we stop at the right division and make it plain, and we don't look at the other aspect of it. So what this verse does, it encourages us to write down our vision, make it clear so that we can run towards it and keep our eyes fixed on it. And I love the last part. Even if it takes time to come to fruition, a lot of times you get discouraged when we write something down, we have the goals, we have the plans, and we don't see it coming to fruition in the timeline that we want it to. So what Habakkuk does is remind us that, hey, even if you don't think it's happening when you want it to happen, it will happen. Just keep focused. So we're going to go now to Acts 17, 18. And this is not a verse that we, Acts 2, 17 to 18. This is not a verse that we use for visioning often, even though it speaks to it as well. So it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your me young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And I'll stop right there, but the, the importance of this verse is that it speaks to the role of the Holy Spirit in giving us visions and dreams. And also it highlights the importance of paying attention to these revelations and taking actions towards them. A lot of times when, when we dream, we might get instructions or directions, but we don't pay attention to the dream. We're not in tune with what the Holy Spirit is saying, and so we think it's something frivolous, and we don't pay attention to it. That's one of the ways that we can find out exactly how we should move in accordance to the time or what God's plan for our life is. So... We are going to look now at examples of visioning in both the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Three examples of each. So in the Old Testament, we see where Abraham, God had promised Abraham to be the father of a great nation. No. When God called Abraham, he gave him a vision of becoming the father of a great nation. Despite not knowing how this would come to pass, Abraham believed in the vision and took practical steps towards it. Through his faith and obedience, the vision was eventually realized. So we also have an example of Moses and the vision of the promised land that is found in Exodus, as well as David and the vision of building the temple. So for Moses, when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, he gave him a vision of leading the Israelites out of Egypt and into the promised land. So despite facing numerous obstacles and setbacks, Moses held on to the vision and eventually led the Israelites to the land that God had promised them. For David, he had a vision to build a temple. Now what I like is that despite not being able to carry out the vision himself, David made preparations for it and entrusted it to his son. So through their joint effort, the vision was realized. Now in the New Testament, we see where Jesus had a vision for the kingdom of God, and this can be found in Matthew 6, 33. We see where Paul had a vision for spreading the gospel, and he expressed this in Romans 15, 20 to 21, as well as John's vision of the new heaven and new earth, and this was described in Revelation 21, verses 1 to 4. Now, while I summarize all those visions in the New Testament, what it is is that these three persons, in the New Testament. So Jesus' vision was for the kingdom of God characterized by love, justice, and righteousness, with an emphasis on prioritizing spiritual pursuits over earthly ones. Paul's vision is to spread the gospel to those who have not yet heard it and build the new communities of, communities of believers. 
John's vision of a new creation where God's presence is fully realized and all things are made new, free from the brokenness and the pains of this world. So when we look at these examples throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see that having a clear vision can provide direction, motivation, and lead to the fulfillment of God's plans and purposes. So now you see that visioning is indeed a principle within the Bible that is applicable to us. So what are the steps for visioning? They are very simple. The first one, the first step is to seek God's will and guidance. How do you do this? You do this through prayer. And we can look at Philippians 4, 6 to 7, which says, Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. At the peace of God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Now, this involves seeking God's direction and wisdom in all aspects of visioning. So that's why we said that it was very important for us to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because whatever the vision is that we have or the goals we want to achieve, we should always pray about them and ask God's guidance on them to see if this is in alignment with what he created us for. The second step is to create a clear vision statement. And we saw where this was described in Habakkuk, where it says, write the vision and make it plain. Now, when it is clear, um, this involves articulating the vision in a way that is easy to understand and communicate to others. A lot of times, especially in, in coaching, when they ask persons, so what is your vision? They cannot communicate it clearly to you. They, they, they believe they understand it in their minds, but they're not able to make it clear or communicate it clearly to you. So Habakkuk tells us, write the vision and make it plain. The third step is to align the vision with biblical values. And this is emphasized in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17. And all the Ema warriors should know what this verse says. <laughs> so it says, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. No. This involves ensuring that the vision aligns with the values and teachings of the Bible and is consistent with God's character and purpose. So God will never give you a vision that is outside of his teachings and the values of the Bible. It will never, he will never give you a vision that is outside of his purpose for you. So he cannot create it to be a teacher and you are visualizing to become an athlete. And that is why we say see God's guidance. So the fourth step is to set achievable goals, create a plan and a plan of action as described in Proverbs 16, 3. And this says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. So what does this involve? It involves breaking the vision down into achievable goals and developing a clear plan of action of how to implement it. Now, the final step, and the, I like this step because it, it allows for a bit of creativity. Find images that represent your goals and put them on a vision board. So you've done all that. You saw God, you write the vision, it is clear, you know what you want to do, you create your goals and an action plan. No, from your goals, you need to find images that you can put so that when you look at it, it will remind you of what your goals are. So I've already given you the steps on how to create a vision. Now what's the benefit of all of this? So the first thing is that it creates clarity of purpose. Now visioning can help you clarify your goals and prioritize by providing a clear mental picture of what you believe. It provides direction and focus. It increases motivation. When you visualize your desired outcome, you become more motivated to work towards it as you see the benefits of achieving it in your mind's eyes. So basically, you're seeing yourself achieving the goal in your mind long before you're even achieving it. So you see the finish line, you visualize the finish line even while you're going through the process, and that will keep you motivated. 
It improves performance. Visualizing has been shown to improve performance in a wide range of activities from sports to public speaking to academic performance. So before coming up here, I had to see myself up here because <laughs> All right, so it reduces stress. When you visualize a positive outcome, it can reduce stress and anxiety, and you can see a positive future and feel more confident in your ability to achieve it. So you see, as I wrote this, it was even ministering to me as I did this. It enhances creativity. No, it helps to unlock your creativity in allowing you to imagine new possibilities and solutions to problems. So when you come upon an obstacle, because you already have the end goal in mind, you don't plan to change the goal, you just find another way to do it, so it enhances your creativity in that way. It's increased resilience. When faced with setbacks or challenges, it can help you to stay focused on your goals and maintain a positive attitude, which can help you to bounce back quickly. Even if you have a failure or a stumbling block, you will just realize that is not one of the ways to achieve your goals and you find another way. So in conclusion, visioning involves seeking God's will and guidance through prayer, developing a clear vision statement, aligning the vision with biblical values, setting achievable goals and creating a plan of action. The benefits of visioning includes being focused and increasing your motivation, commitment, and it encourages creativity. So today, I encourage you to embrace visioning in all areas of your life. And don't be afraid to dream big and trust God to guide you as you seek to fulfill the vision that he has placed on your heart. And if you're wondering, how are you going to be able to achieve everything that I've just said, here we have a tool, we don't leave you alone. So we have the Wired to Win Productivity Planner and we have a visioning area in there that can help you. Also, if you believe that, hey, it is coming up to the end of the, the first quarter and I haven't done anything, I need some help with these goals that I have set, or you realize that January start off good, February kind of, and now we're in March, you're not doing anything that you plan to do, get back on track. Let us help you to get back on track. We have a workshop uh, for Wired to Win that will be on March 25th. And you can ask us for more information. If you go to our website, which is wiredtowindaynate.com, you'd be able to register and sign up immediately. And you can always contact us for more information. So I hope today you got some clarity on how or the importance of visioning, the biblical concepts of visioning, and why it is beneficial for you, both in your personal life, as well as as you travel this life, your ministry, you know, whatever it is that God has called you to do. Visioning is very important in all areas and aspects. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. That was good. Visioning. What's your greatest takeaway? What's your greatest takeaway from what Deaconess Yetunda shared? Yes. Great morning, Apostle. Good Great morning. morning, ministers and the church. Always see it in your mind's eye. You have to envision it. You can't have the vision and you're not clear in your mind. So that was a key takeaway for me. It's big. So you can't have the vision and not see it. That's why I need vision. <laughs> yeah, you need to envision. You need to see. I believe I saw another hand. Sir Tavares. Go ahead. Uh, my takeaway was align your vision with biblical principles. <laughs> that was big for me. You will frustrate the grace of God upon your life if you try to go after things that contradicts the purpose of God, the will of God, revelation of God for your life. In my second book, Turning Nothing into Something, 
I deal with the whole matter of uh, God works with what he builds you to do. The way he fashions you. So he won't put the, the square in the round, the peg in, the, in, in that, in that square peg in the round hole. You know what I mean? So what, 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 what were you built for? What were you built for? Yeah. So you have to understand you. Yes, yes, man. Of God. Great morning, Apostle. Great morning. And man. leaders, members, morning. Um, vision is a mechanism that provides an outlet for you to achieve the purpose of God. Mm. Vision is a mechanism that provides an outlet for you to achieve the purpose of God. Powerful. Powerful. Thank you. Go ahead. Great morning, Apostle. My greatest takeaway is that it reduces stress. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true because now you're in sync. You know what you're about. It's, it's a terrible thing when you don't know what you're about. You're all over the place. You can't, it leads to confusion. I think I saw one hand way down there and they will take the final one right here. Lift your hand if you had the hand up there. All right, no? All right, come right here. Final one right here. Uh, Minister Tamika. Great morning, Apostle. Um, one of my takeaways from this morning is that vision, it gives you energy. So when you are distracted or when you become inconsistent and you look at your vision and you go over your vision board it gives you energy to continue the journey it, it does vision gives energy right the vision so that those who read it will what run you get energy you want to know how i do so many things it's vision vision gives energy vision pushes you drives you clap your hands give god praise thank you so much deaconess here tunda god bless you God bless you. And you know, this morning I was up and I was meditating on the whole matter of vision and I went in my study, stood before my vision board. There are two things I have on it. Big things. Buy them big. <laughs> them's a big I put them on it and I just walk away. <laughs> they have been on it for like five to seven years. And uh you know, last week somebody called me about one of them, not knowing that it's on my vision board. I said, this needs to happen this year. The week before. So sometimes you put it on it, nothing happens, nothing happens. But if you know it's the will of God, this year pass, put it on it next year. I just call it balance, bad forward. What I've accomplished this year, bring it over into next year. Don't stress yourself. There are some things I put on it, I can't do it. I just put it on it. And I said, mm, Jesus. And my subconscious say, you know, in a sense. There's no way you're going to do that. I just put it on it. And I said, mm, serious, I just put it on it. And I take a deep breath when I look at it and I said, God. <laughs> And I go to first lady and I say, baby, this is going to take God. <laughs> and I just keep putting it on. Serious. Last week, week before last, interestingly, I was thinking about one of them. I was talking to a particular institution about one of them. And I called one of my prophetic students. And I said, so and so and so. And the prophetic student said, dad, it's done. I see you connecting with somebody from this place. The same place. And then the prophetic student said to me, and this is the era that I think it's going to happen. The same era I said, listen to me where you come from. Huh? <laughs> when, listen, Visioning takes faith. If everything you put on your vision board you can do, you don't need God. You put some things on there and it stretches you. And your subconscious pulls you down because it's programmed 
to the natural but you keep reprogramming it and after a while you are shocked from glory to glory and then from glory to glory and when you look you find yourself just climbing stepping from level to level it's a powerful thing but you don't have to do it you can choose to live where you are die where you are that's how some people can do it ask your neighbor is that you really just die where you are somebody not moving I said look at your neighbor you're afraid really die where you are Ah. Hmm. how many of you you have made commitments to to people to say you know if I don't do this I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars how many of you did it how many of you did what you were supposed to do good how many of you didn't do it and you pay <laughs> you had to pay <laughs> how many of you like the paying no so how, how many are going to do it because you don't like the pay you're not going to do it you're going to do it all right are you did it are you did it going to all right hmm. how many you didn't do it and you didn't pay <laughs> wave your hand you're in church now. You didn't pay. All right. Who are you supposed to pay? Huh? Pardon me? Yes. Oh, you didn't make a commitment to pay. Why? All right. So if you don't do it this week, you pay me. How much are you going to pay me? If you don't do it this week, you pay. Huh? All right, that, that can't take out my wife. <laughs> I will call you. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So we want to wrap up visioning this morning. Next week, we'll go to something else. No. You know that you know that most people in life think they think that they are victims and they think that they have no control over life. I just saw the thing set. And I realize I'm gonna try and inspire as many persons as I can. But I'm gonna stress myself over those who now get it. Because you can carry the horse or the donkey to the water, you can't force them to drink. You have to want it and you have to choose to believe. So I made up my mind, I'm going to run and who running with me run. Who catching it, catch it. Who don't catch it, I hope you catch it. But I'm going to keep it moving. Say amen. amen. Because as I told you, one of the challenges is to want things for people more than they want it for themselves. You know, God believes in you more than you believe in yourself. Yeah. But it doesn't matter how much God believes in you, how much other people believe in you. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody can help you. You have to believe. Say amen. 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 Now, now, oh, let me advertise this. We need a groundsman, a caretaker for a, a particular facility. And we will employ you by tomorrow morning if you fit the criteria. A groundsman, a caretaker. I want you to reach out to Minister Faye, 550-3775. That's 550-3775. If you get <laughs> if you get the job you have to pay me 10 percent <laughs> as my commission <laughs> i'm just messing with you all right so reach out to minister fee after all right, let me quickly run through this let me quickly run through this most of us don't understand that vision is influenced by environment Vision is influenced by what? 
by environment. Which is why I generally encourage persons that if you if, if your environment is negative and it has a big impact on you, you might want to get out of that environment, but until you get the environment out of you, you're not going to begin to vision differently. And some people get out of the environment, but the environment is still in them. That's bigger than the environment itself. Oh God, that's, I could close the service right now. Some people get out of the environment, but the environment, they got out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. They came from under slavery, but inside they were still slaves. Jamaica is free from slavery. But I'm telling you, 90% of the people still have a slavery mentality. Victims need slave masters. Need people to drive them, watch them. Until you begin to function like a manager, you will never be a manager. Go to the ant and shift your mindset. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. 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 Is one near summer slap? A summer what? Slap way? Something named so? Something named daggering? Oh, I can't say that in church, right? It's one name, Weddy Weddy. Something named that? Anything named so? Huh? Party song, right? Is a party? Oh, Daggering is an action. Oh, what, oh, what kind of action is that? <laughs> something named bend over. All right, let, let, let me ask you something. Where all of them something you come from? And when you meet some people, all of this, this is all them say. Social, socialization. It's culture. You have people, their vision is party. The vision is complexion. <laughs> I love basketball. Jamarant. The man is doing well. Has a $200 million contract. And he's throwing it away. Over foolishness. Because his vision is limited. One of the reasons I like LeBron James is not because right now he's the most skilled or the sharpest player. It's just because he has a, a great head. Not just for the game, but he has a great head for life, for business. I admire people who are shrewd, sharp, people who are thinkers. Some people only have a vision for complexion. Poor people spend every day of the week a plan how they're going to party weekend. Or what they're going to have. How, how they can escape the work world and have some fun weekend. People who are going to be successful, they're thinking about how can I use weekend to plan. So after I come out of all of this 9 to 5 or whatever, I'm gonna, how can I use the weekend to plan the rest of my destiny? How can I create my desired future? Vision. I was listening to some dancehall music the other day. I mean real hardcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As I do my research, <laughs> I'm serious. I watch videos. I look and miss a good God from Zion. Look at the society. It's sick your stomach. But this is where the people's minds are. 
And so sometimes you're talking to them and you're talking gibberish. They don't understand. There's such a gap. So while some people are singing old dog like we. And while some people, their vision is sex. Their vision is complexion. Their vision is party. Their vision is lick out head back. Vision is get rich quick die or die trying. Other people, they have another kind of vision based on the environment that they are in. They say different things, they talk the language different. You know, people who come to this church, you look at, look at what they write. As a man think it's so easy. Huh? So if you want to walk into your destiny, be everything God wants you to be, you better change your mind. Change your mind. I'm in a business where you want to say, me have the mind of Christ at that, me I say. And I shall have what I decree, so me I go and speak life over me. No anxious for nothing, no devil can press for me, button can tenderize me like mutton. No greedy, no glutton, progress for me, life and do something. Run this Eurasia with patience. Environment. This environment produces songs. When you just come in this environment, you're going to feel strange if you're not used to it. Yes. Just like if me come in at your environment, I'm going to feel strange because I'm not used to that. My environment is different. This environment, it, 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 it produces, we're not normal, ta-da, ta-da. The environment produces that, we're not normal. We're not normal, we're royal. It produces a different kind of thinking, a different kind of flowing, a different kind of, 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 of operating, a different way of operating. And it's awkward sometimes. So many people are stuck in a rut. And I mean, it used to pee in my heart for years. want to help everybody even more than they want to help themselves. I realize that you have to want it. And you have to believe you can come out. And you have to be willing for somebody to help you to come out. And if you don't, if you don't want that, nobody can help you. So some people are stuck in a rut. And it's not because they are not gifted. It's not because they are not talented. It's because they have the wrong vision. They're focusing on the negatives. They're focusing on the wrong things. Uh, the complete Jewish Bible. Complete Jewish Bible. Proverbs 4.23. In the complete Jewish Bible. Write it down. It says, above all else. That's the complete Jewish Bible. It says... It says in Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart. That word heart really has to do with what? Shout it loud and clear. Mind. mind. Guard your mind. For it is the source of life's consequences. It is the source of life's consequences. You understand? No, no. Wrapping up. It is a source of life's consequences. So when you look at your life, I want you to understand, you know, and then nobody fault, you know. It's, it's based on what you allowed to enter your heart. The day you start taking responsibilities, the day your life starts change. Take responsibility for where your, 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 your life is. So what you see 
is what you'll move towards. What you see is what you'll move towards. What you see is what you reproduce. Do you see yourself overcoming bad habits? You have to. If you don't see it, where you are is where you're always going to be. Do you see yourself overcoming sin? Do you see yourself living the way God wants you to live? Do you see yourself conquering in 2023? You have to sit down and see it. You have to sit and see it. If you don't see it, I can't help you. You have to see it. Why do you think Jesus asks people, do you desire to be made whole? In other words, what you're seeing. Do you see yourself being made whole? I can't help you if you don't see it. Do you see yourself conquering in business? Do you see yourself creating impact? Do you see yourself making a change? Do you see yourself balancing several things? And not being stressed out. Do you see yourself moving from where you live? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you see yourself walking in the career or the business that God wants you to have or wants you to walk in? You have to see it. Do you see yourself completing your studies? Do you see yourself having the children you're supposed to have and they're coming out well? You know, you know the, lady, the lady went to the preacher and said, pray for my daughter. My daughter is a wretch. He said, I can't help you because she's a wretch. He said, I want for you to go and pray and meditate until you start seeing her the way God sees her and then come back to me. Can I tell you, within 21 days, the girl was home because she started seeing her the way God and she started declaring and calling the things that be not as though they were. You need to lay your hands on your children when they are behaving like bastards and you need to say you're royal, excellence is all over you. You need to speak it. That's what my mother did to me. A rum, may I drink? Rum. And she had talked about me, a man of God. I said, this woman mad, you know. She said, you're a man of God. I see you preaching all over the world. My mouth nasty, you know. And she said, the word of God has got to come out of my mouth. Ah. She saw something that I didn't see. And she spoke it in the atmosphere until after a while I started seeing it. I started believing it. And then my life started flowing in the direction of her declaration. So before your dreams come to pass, you have to see them. When something gets in your subconscious, it's like gravity. There's a pull. And I want for you to know that what's happening to you right now is based on your subconscious. Spend energy, time, and effort to reprogram your subconscious because nobody can do it for you. You don't like your life, change your life. You see all of these ladies, look around at them. They don't like the way the hair was. They change it. Amen. And they don't like it this week. Next week you can't recognize them. They change it. Reprogram your subconscious. You know what was my prayer? My prayer this morning was just meditation. First Peter 2 verse 9. I'm a chosen generation. I'm royal. And I researched every word and meditated on it. I'm kingly. Yeah. I, I'm a chosen generation. You know what that means? It means he handpicked me. 
It means he selected me. It means he snatched me. It means I'm his favorite. <laughs> so if you see me walk a certain kind of way as if me special, it's because me actually believe so. And if you walk a certain kind of way like you know nobody, it's because you believe so. Mm. So you're, you have to see yourself as God sees you. It doesn't matter how, because you see your vision comes out of how you see you. So you have to spend some time reprogramming your subconsciousness. Your imagination is extremely powerful. Uh, once you start changing it, your life is going to start changing. I was talking to one of our warriors from Waffe Fort Lauderdale, and I said, the man changing the man. The man's language change. He's now teaching one of the Ema groups. He's mentoring men. He's leading. And I was talking to him. And he said, he said, Apostle, he said, Dad, he calls me Dad. He said, Dad, my, my philosophy has changed. <laughs> I said, philosophy? <laughs> he said, yeah. I build, I build before I buy. He said, my philosophy is build before you buy. That's like becoming production oriented rather than consumption oriented. So you build it and from what you build, it will be able to help you to buy. Most people, because of their inferiority, insecurities, they think, about, they, they think about consuming. They think about spending. They think about buying. Because buying makes them feel good. Makes them feel like somebody. But let me tell you, there's no amount of clothes and makeup you can put on to deal with insecurity. There's no amount of car you can drive, money you can get to help you to overcome insecurity and inferiority complex. Fix it from the inside out. Your meditation will cause alteration. Ah, this is what if. So God wants you to have a new vision. He wants for you to sit down and start picturing and seeing yourself. He wants for you to flow with imagination. He wants for you to start enlarging your vision. Enlarging your vision. I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. I'm excited for what if. I'm excited for myself. I'm excited for the future that I'm seeing. It's bright. It's awesome. You need to wear shades this week. Um, I'm very, very excited. So get the right things on your wall. Get the right things on your vision board. If you don't have no vision board, paste them on your wall. It might seem ridiculous initially, but trust me, watch what God, watch what God is going to do over time. Buy the productivity planner, work it, walk with it. Why? Because, because other things walking around with you. Your subconscious is walking around with you. That's why we created a mobile productivity planner so you can walk around with it and constantly flip through and look at the future you. <laughs> Look at the future spiritual you. Look at the, fu the future you in terms of your education, in terms of your family, in terms of your money. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. This is good. Let me wrap up by saying Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, you're going to perish. Stop sorry for people. Empower people. And if they don't want to be empowered, leave them right there. You hear me? Stop sorry for people. Stop being sorry for people. Nobody owes you anything. Stop acting as if people owe you. You owe yourself. And you owe the society. God gave you strength. He gave you breath. He gave you a mind. Make up your mind you're going to be a contributor and not a taker. So them rich people ain't gone. Mm -hmm. Them owe you nothing. You know how the people them work? So where there's no vision, people perish. If you're perishing right now, it's because you lack vision. You can claim that you have a vision, but I, I would prefer to look at the fruit 
of the tree to determine what kind of tree it is. So if I look at your life and I see you perishing, it's, a, it's indicative of the fact that you don't have no vision. They say, Apostle, you're judging me. No, the scripture judged you. This verse is judging you. You have no vision. You say, I have a vision. Well, it's not clear. It's not plain. Vision is a contradiction to depression. You can't have a vision and be consumed with depression. Right? The vision. Make it plain. He that read it, runs. Energy comes when your vision is clear. Depression, gloom, sadness leaves you. People with vision can't be bored. <laughs> but I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored? You're not a vision. <laughs> When you have a vision, you eat life with ten finger. <laughs> <laughs> and then, my barrel to a year one too. Because you waste time. In Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, the Lord asks the prophet Zechariah. He said, what do you see? He said, Zechariah, I want to work with you, you know. But tell me what you see first. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11, God said to the prophet Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, Jeremiah, I want to use you and I want to work with you, but your eyes must be aligned first. In Amos chapter 7 and verse 8, the Lord asked the prophet Amos, what do you see? He said, I want to work with you, but your eyes must be aligned first. Not even God can run with you if you can't see well. Make sure your eyes working. He said, what seest thou, Jeremiah? He said, I see an almond tree. He said, you see well. 7, 8. So what you see is important to God. And significantly necessary to the fulfillment of your destiny. What you have been seeing is based on how you grow. What you have been seeing is based on what people tell you. It's based on the music where you listen to. Based on the whole heap of soap opera. It's based on the, on, on the, on the movies. It's based on the, yeah, all of that. In Numbers 13, 33, the children of Israel saw that they were grasshoppers. That's what they saw. We are as grasshoppers in our sight and in theirs. They saw themselves as midgets. They were royal. As a prince, you have wrestled with God and prevailed. I'm going to pull a nation out of you. You're a prince. That means you're descendants royal. But them say we're a grasshopper. Because if you graze eagle in a fowl pen, you're going to think him a fowl. All right, you don't know a fowl, chicken. <laughs> if you raise eagle in a chicken coop, I'm going to think say my chicken. And so they raise the kings. In the coop of Egypt. And they came out. Like grasshoppers. You're royal. You might not look so. You might not feel so. But you are. Shift your mind. And the fact is. Joshua and Caleb did it. So you can do it too. Shift your mind. I can't shift it for you. I can try to help you like I'm trying now. But if you put up a resistance like Barry Salmon, <laughs> I can't help you. I can't help you. Say amen. 
in Genesis 11, verse 6. I'm putting down my script. And the Lord said, Behold, the people, they are one. They have one language. Who are you going to have one language with? With me and this house or with the world and the foolishness out there? Some of you are booty. <laughs> you are booty on two sides. You are do world and you are do church. You are miserable too. Because you are not enjoying world. And you are not enjoying church. Because you can't, you can't serve two masters. He, he says that the, the, the people, they are one. They have one language. There's a language that governs Wafif. And you can know those who are from this house and fully connected with this house. I call one of the, well, I call one of the persons from this house. <laughs> I say, oh, how are you? Me day I pass. I say, who are you? I, I am blessed and highly feel I say your subconscious betray you that has not been reprogrammed you are here for five seven ten years and you know reprogram your subconscious yet because you're buried in work that's coming out of you that's how your life is and then me they are pray for your kata break loose shit not now break loose you are attracting what is in your subconscious you want me to agree with you? I can't agree with you and you, Dedeso. Because you not agree with yourself. You are double-minded. You are divided. I wonder if you're with me. You not agree with you. You need to work on reprogramming your subconscious so that you are one with yourself. And when you open your mouth and say something, it carries a certain kind of weight. Yes. I wonder if you not understand. He said, the people, they are one. Are you one with you so that you can be one with me? The people are one. You come here, you're on a journey. This is a university. You come here, fish, and then go. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey, the man that in hot church, hot today, hot when preach, boy, it was full of fire. <laughs> Me feel it, man. Me feel it. You feel goosebump all over you. Hey, me can throw cold water upon you and you feel goosebump. You don't feel goosebump? When I blow up on my wife, ears she full. Of... Hey, babe. <laughs> a goosebump you come ever. Go on. Go on, man. Go beat it. This is a goosebump you bring chance for me, Shad. <laughs> I so need prayer though. <laughs> we need prayer and fasting. You know better pray for me while I pray for myself. <laughs> and then say, hey. One side is on the inside looking at the outside. No, I'm on the outside looking at the inside. One side on the outside looking at the inside. No, I'm on the inside looking at the outside. Pray for me while I pray for myself in Jesus' name. <laughs> I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. That is the testimony. So listen to me as we close. The people were one. You need to be one with yourself. Mind, soul, body. That's what you're working on. That's why you meditate. Because no feel no way, no. All that we got through damage. 
I'm not sorry for you. You think you're special? Because of your case? How many of you suffer in your life? You go through some stuff. Wave your hand at me. Look, oh no, look around, man. Look, look, look. You know you're unique. That's right. <laughs> And then rob me, then lie on me, then kick me off a bus, me drop off a roof, one black drop in my head, car lick me down. Doctor one cut out some out of me, car he said me I go dead. Listen to me, you know, the whole of we have story. And in spite of all that, me they are so right now. So you may ask you know, why are your excuse? Watch a basketball game last week. The man said, we don't make excuses. We just produce. Me say, write that down, baby. That I go preach. We don't make excuses. We just produce. Well, I want to hear your story. And let's have a happy ending. The people were one. They have one language. Watch your mouth. Hey, it's rough. Hey, watch your mouth, you know. Because sometimes you want to say some things. Watch your mouth. Mm. Restrain yourself. No negative confession. We're not signed for the negative package. They have one language. Watch this. And this they imagine to do. They have imagination. Imagination is seeing what you desire before you move to it. Sit down and imagine. If you don't have time to sit down and imagine and create this thing, you don't have time for success. So why should I beat up my head over you? If you don't value you enough to sit down and plan it and get a picture and work it, where may I go stress myself? No. You must want it more mm. than me. You must want to push out the baby more than how me want to stand with you and, and support you. Amen. And if you're not ready for push, let me can't help you. The doctor said, call me. <laughs> when the dilation takes place fully. No, call me until you're ready, until pushing time. If you're not ready for push, where you call coach for? This big. Call me when you're ready for push. So you need to spend some time, develop what's in you until you're fully dilated. You like it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Spend some time and develop what is in you until you are fully dilated. And when it's time to push, you call the pro. Now you can come, when you can come and get some checkup in between. But if you're going to sit down and work to push this thing out of you, you must be ready. Yes. Am I wasting your time? Chop you. Well, cut you. This they imagine to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them. Watch this. They weren't Christians, they weren't God's chosen people, and the Bible says they were unstoppable because they had vision, they had imagination, they had declaration. You have God. And you are saying, life just rough, things not work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, sir, you know, so I'm last week. <laughs> you know, they are dead, we are dead already, sir. So. A, a, a piece of variation, I'm going to kill you in here, you know. stuff and the more you prove them wrong. Time. 
time, right? Bow your heads right where you are. <laughs> if you want to align yourself, bow your heads, man. If you want to align yourself with God's will for your life, number one, you need to give him your life. You know the drama? Some of you claim that you have given him your life, but are you of it? Yeah, you're not living for God. You're not living based on the simple principles of God's word. As your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. While you're online, you do the same. And you said to me, Apostle, thank you for sharing with simplicity. I want to reprogram my subconscious. I want to shift my life. I want to follow Jesus. I'm not a child of God right now, but I want to follow Jesus. If that's you, lift your hand. I want to follow Jesus. I see that hand. Is there one more? I see your hand, warrior, my brethren. Is there one more? I see your hand, my friend. Is there one more? I see that hand down there. Yeah, man. More? More? If God is talking to you, stand up, man. Stand up. You just lift up your hand. Stand up. Stand up. Step out in the aisle right here. Stand up right here. Come down here, sir. Come on, my little friend. Come. If you're afraid for owning me, I'm not afraid for owning you. If you don't. <laughs> just come if you're coming. In school, working now, you plan to go back to school. Yeah, good. All right, yeah. Is there one more? Follow Jesus. You need to come out of a certain kind of environment. You know, you know, when people understand, you see, when you say, You yeah, give God your life, you know, what you really have to yeah, give me your mind. can think a different kind of way. Is there one more? You say yes to Jesus. All right. All right. You're here. You once walked with Jesus, but your life not right. And you know you need to come back. If you're online talking to you too, you know, at not, just say it. We're going to put some numbers there for you to connect. Lift your hand and say it with me. If, if you're not, if you, you once walked with Jesus and you're coming back, you're ready to recommit. Wave your hand. I see that hand. Come in, my brethren. Just, just step out and come. Clap your, clap your hands for Jesus. I know you're not eating a breakfast yet, you know. That's why you're clapping like that. <laughs> Is there one more? How about online? Tell me what's happening online. People acknowledging online. People saying yes. You're online. Surrender to Jesus. All right. Maybe, maybe you're, you're a Christian. But you say, Apostle, you know what I want? I want to come. I want to be a part of this church family. I want to be under spiritual authority. I want to be a member of this church. A son of the house. Everybody must be under authority. Lift your hand if that's you. You're not a member here, but you know you're supposed to be a member here. It's a spiritual decision. Lift your hand if that's you. Lift it quickly. All right. What's happening online? You're online. You want to get saved. You want to recommit. I want to be a member of this church. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just like these men. Let's pray. Come and kneel down to Jesus. <clears throat> Loud and clear, big man thing. We said, Jesus. Help them, help them, church. Jesus. I recognize that I am not in line with you. Forgive me of every sin. Cause me to be aligned right now with your will, your purpose, and your plans. As I seek to reprogram my subconscious so that I can come into transformation, help me. Help me. Help me. I give my mind, my body, and my soul totally to you. Amen. Clap your hands for them, church. 
Still a little bit. Let's follow her from here. God bless you here. Say, I have decided. You came in late, didn't get an opportunity to give your tithes and your offerings. Just come quickly, put it on the altar. Somebody say to follow Jesus. No turning back. Come on, stand with me. No turning back. The, the, the world behind me. The cross before me. Sit, 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 sit. The world behind me. No, no, no turning back. No, 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 no turning back. You, you know, say, when they say the world behind you, it no, it no mean you're no business with the world. Eh? The systems and the principles of the world that contradicts the word of God, that's behind you. And the cross is before you. Amen? I've decided. Now, we're going to pray for a few persons on the outside. Amen. You ready, Minister Clayton? Ready, Minister? Head on to the prayer tent for me. And we have a, we have a friend, today's friendship day, right? So we want to pray. Ministers, prophetic students, diaconate, head to the prayer tent. Because today, you are leaving here without a burden that you came with. Oh, you're not believing. I said, whatever burden you came with, you're leaving without it. Whatever affliction you came with, you're leaving what? Without it. We're going to speak a word over your life and you're going to be free. God is opening doors. Releasing favor. Sports competition and whole heap of fellowship thing begins today. Yes? Hello? Yes? Very good. So, there are a whole lot of stuff going on. I want you to be a part of it. Domino competition. Yeah, Christians can play Domino. You know, got hell. Hello? We're going to play football. We're going to play netball, basketball. Said, yeah, man, I said Domino, but you that that. Jerking competition, jerk chicken competition. Yes, table tennis. Run, walk, a whole heap of stuff. Amen. What I want us to do, and we have our sister churches coming too, like Light of the Gentiles. I know they are going to be a part of it. We're going to beat them really good. <laughs> We're going to beat them into submission. <laughs> um, I want us to get the children involved. So even like Dominoes, I want us to get the children involved. The, the different games, I want us to be intentional about getting our children involved. Amen? Lift your right hand. The Lord bless you and keep you. Makes his face to shine upon you. He lifts up the light of his glorious countenance on you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. Both now and forever. Amen. Love upon your neighbor and tell them we're shifting our mindset. Love upon your neighbor and tell them reprogramming the subconscious. Love upon your neighbor and tell them you're not normal. Love upon your neighbor. No turning back. No, 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 no. No turning back. Da, 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 da. The cross before. This week, this week, this week, this week, this very week. The cross before me. This week. The world behind me. The cross before me, the, the world behind me. No turning back, no, no. Remember the tent, the ministry tent outside. Good, good, goodbye world. Now I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. Now I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind 
go God's way the rest of my life. I met my mother this morning. She was a running down the heavenly road. She said, I want to make it in a due time before the heaven door closed. I beg you, shake me, Lord. I beg you, wake me, Lord. Don't make me sleep too late. Due time before the heaven Walk, oh, 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 walk, oh, Walk, oh, 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 walk, holy. Mount Zion children, walk, oh.